So for a few minutes, I want to talk about mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is what happens in your body when your body's making new hair or new skin or new nails or new gut or new bone tissue. Meiosis is what happens when your body is making sperm if you're a male or eggs if you're a female. And remember this before we, before we kind of dig into this, that humans have 46 chromosomes. So that means that when your body makes a new skin cell, it's making new cells that have 46 chromosomes. In your mind, that is 2N diploid. That's what that is. When the body makes gametes, a, a sperm or an egg, think about this for just a second. A sperm has to be half the count and an egg has to be half the count so that when they add together, they become the whole count 46. So that means a sperm is not 2N, it is N. An egg is N. It's not diploid. It's easy for me to remember because it sounds like half. It's haploid. Haploid 23. Haploid 23 come together to make 46. So that's just kind of something I need you to turn around in your head as you're going along and it might help you kind of follow things, and I'll repeat it again, but I just wanted to lay it out there before I get started. And really before I get started, I want to talk about chromosomes for just a second. A chromosome is what the genetic information is, is carried on in your body. And usually the top telomere, <coughs> the top telomeres are usually short. These are the top ones. So each piece is called a telomere. One half of this whole thing is called a chromatid. So one chromatid is from, from here over and another one is from here over. So when I'm looking at the picture that was in your book, number one, those are called sister chromatids. Now, there are some words that are going to be kind of mixy-uppy as we go through this. The middle part of a chromosome is called the centromere. We're going to talk about a centriole and a centrosome later, but there, so there are a lot of words that have the centro name in them, and we're going to have to kind of keep those, keep those all straight. There are also two little grabby sites on either side of the chromosome, and they're called kinetochores. A kinetochore is an attachment site for a spindle fiber so that the chromosome can be pulled apart or moved within the cell. Kineto means movement, choreo means uh, dance. So if you've heard of choreography before. So if we're talking about a kinetochore, we're talking about an attachment site so that this chromosome can dance across the, the cell. Kind of sounds goofy, but it is what it is. Okay, I've got to have room, so I've got to, this has got to go, and that will give us a little prelude to understand mitosis. So that's where we're going to start, mitosis. The first phase, which is actually not considered mitosis, is called interphase. And there are all different, there are even segments of interphase that I'm not going to really talk about. But basically, the interphase, I'm just going to tell you that it is the growth phase of the cell. That's the in between of mitosis, is what I want to say. A uh, probably most of the life cycle is this, and what I'm about to draw is not really much. In interphase, the nucleus is intact. And in interphase, the DNA is in the shape of long strands. And the DNA is called chromatin. Chromatin. Now, I'm not going to draw a lot of players inside of this cell because I need you to, need you to follow this. But there's an area called the centrosome that has two centrioles at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to say these are centrioles. And we're going to track these two items all the way through mitosis. 
So the first phase of mitosis is called prophase. And in prophase, the nucleus begins breaking down and these centrioles begin moving to opposite poles of the cell. And the chromosomes, instead of being long and stringy like spaghetti, they condense into X-shaped structures. Some people call them bar-shaped structures. I always think they look like X-shaped thingies. I'm gonna draw a big red and a big blue and a baby red and a baby blue. These words I'm saying, they're not science words. They're words that I wanna talk about, okay? It just makes it easy for me to, to tell the story. These are chromosomes we're gonna track through here. This is called prophase. All right, the next phase is called metaphase. Meta, metal, brita, beta. Metaphase. It means middle. In this phase, the centrioles have moved to opposite, opposite sides of the cell, and there are spindle fibers that have strung across the cell to grab on to these chromosomes. There's also what's called an aster, and I think these microtubular structures coming out of the centrioles are just to kind of anchor this whole system so that it's non-movable, <laughs> the ends are non-movable while we're, while the cell is moving the chromosomes. So I'm drawing a big red, a baby red, I'm drawing a big blue, and a baby blue. Remember that these spindle fibers are joined at the kinetic core on either side. I'm not connecting them because I'm trying to move through this rather quickly. The next step is called anaphase. And in this phase, the centrioles are pulling apart these chromosomes. So the chromosomes pull apart. We have sister chromatids being pulled apart we have a big red and a baby red being pulled apart. And we have a big blue and a baby blue being pulled apart. This is called anaphase. <clears throat> In the next phase, called telophase, we begin getting a cleavage furrow right down the middle. This is what we have in animal cells. In plant cells, it's called a cleavage plate, cell plate. The nuclei begin reforming. We have a centriole in both sides, which will later replicate and form another one. Maybe replicate's not a good word. There will be a big red and a baby red, big red, baby red, big blue, big blue, little blue, little blue, big blue in both of the new cells. So that what will happen is when we start out, Come back over here with me for just a second. When we start out with 46, which is diploid, or 2N, we will end with two entities that are 46, diploid, 2N. And here's how it goes. So we got two cells. I've got one cell here. I've got an intact nucleus. I've got a centriole. And what happens next is kind of like magic. So I need you to kind of pay attention with me for just a second because this is kind of cool what happens next. This baffled me for a long time. I did not understand how this worked. I looked at this and I said, that does not look like what I started with. And it kind of messed with me just a little bit. It looks like something got cut in half. How do I get the same in the end, same number in the end if something got cut in half? Well, what happens, listen to me close, is that each one of these will then go back through interphase, each one of them. And when it goes back through, the other telomeres will bud out. I'm oversimplifying this just a little bit, but this is what happens. It will regain those parts that were snatched off, that were cut in half, so that in the end, both of the daughter cells have the same exact as this mother cell did over here. These are called daughter cells. And this is called telophase. That's the cleavage furrow right there in the middle. Okay, now 
I want to take you from mitosis, which is skin, hair, nails, gut, bone, that kind of division, and I want to talk about sex cell stuff. I want to talk about sperms and eggs for just a few minutes and show you how that's different, how this process is a little bit different in that, in that sense. And I can basically tell you the story by just redoing metaphase and anaphase. So I'm going to simplify this and I'm going to talk about meiosis next. Okay, so hang with me. In meiosis, when we talk about metaphase, instead of single file like this, what happens is it's the buddy system. So homologous chromosomes pair up. Big blue and big red pair up like this. Baby blue and baby red pair up like this. Spindle fibers are holding these in place. Okay? So we have pairing. And then something very cool happens. Because they're together, this process is called synapsis. There is a, a, a wonderful thing called crossing over that happens. What happens is the tip of this blue one may exchange with the tip of that red one. So now, the red one has a little bit of the blue chromosome, and the blue one has a little bit of the red chromosome. In the end, what this means is that every sperm of your dad's, every egg of your mom's, is a little bit different than the last one. It's why you look kind of like your brother or sister, but not all the way, all the way like it. Makes your, the shape of your face, the shape of your body just a little bit different. It provides diversity. Everybody's not the same. That's a cool deal. <clears throat> now watch what happens in anaphase because this is what tells the story of us going from diploid to haploid. So pay attention closely here. So in meiosis anaphase, this is meiosis 1, is what this is called. What happens is we have entire chromosomes being pulled one way and the other way. So we have big red with its blue tip going one way, and we have big blue with its red tip going the other way, and we got baby blue and baby red getting pulled so that in the end, look, look, this is pretty cool. When this splits right here in telophase, instead of having four chromosomes total, each new cell is only going to have how many? It's only going to have one, two in this case. So if we're talking about a human cell, instead of 46, each one of them has 23. Now listen close, because I'm not going to really draw this out, but I need you to dig it in your head. Each one of these haploid two N offspring will go through a mitosis phase that's called meiosis two. So if you have, listen to me close, you have two offspring, each one of them is going to divide again so that in meiosis you get a total of four. So pay close attention. You get four swimmers. Tell me what these little guys are. What are those? Sperm. What's, yeah, little sperms right there. Okay, we got four little sperms from every division. We got four little sperms. Now what is kind of bizarre, this is kind of interesting, is in you ladies, you don't get four eggs. You get one large oocyte where all of the cytosol, cytoplasm concentrate, and then you get polar bodies that were only there to just help split and divide the DNA. So you ladies, you start with one that's probably 46 oogonium, and you get 123 oocyte. Mm. With the guys, you start with 146 spermatogonium, and you get four sperms as offspring. Kind of makes sense in a little bit, because think about this. In an ejaculate of a male, you've got 200 million sperm. That's a lot. So something is, you know, geometrically has to happen to get that many 
participants ready for the action. Remember you ladies, here's something else I need to tell you about. Remember you ladies, listen to this, at birth you have all the eggs you're ever going to have. Kind of changes a little bit, I think, when you hit, when you start cycling and become fertile, the number de diminishes. But when, if you have a child at age 25, you utilized a 25-year-old egg. Right. If you have a child at age 40, guess how old your egg is? It's 40. Damn. It's 40. It's as old as you are. So that explains why the older a woman is, the more likely she could have a birth defect, a Down syndrome child. That's the most common polyploidy Down syndrome, trisomy of 21. Men, all through their life, produce brand new sperm every day. So that explains why you can get some kind of old guy, you know, having kids. Right now, it's pretty fashionable. A lot of people don't have kids until they're in their 40s. The only problem is, think about it, when your child graduates from high school, you're you're kind of barely able to make it up the stairs to get into the, uh, the stadium or the <laughs> coliseum to go watch. That's not very cool. I mean, it is what it is, but it all works out, I suppose. So mitosis and meiosis, just remember this, in mitosis you get two things that are just like the parent cell, in meiosis you get four things, if it's a male they're half of the original cell, and if it's an egg you get only one. So, so anyhow, you ladies are very unique, you always knew that you were special, and this is one of those other situations that just shows how special you are. So that's it, mitosis and meiosis.